Once again, here's the worksheet. We're going to start with finding the slope. And in order to find the slope, you've got to know what slope is. Slope is rise over run. Now remember that your slope, if it's going up, it's positive. The rise, if it's going down, it's negative, the rise. But the run, we're always going to look at it from left to right, so it's always going to be positive. So once again, you have to compare two points, and they actually give you the two points that they want you to compare, this dot right here and this one right there. So from this dot to this one, from left to right, kind of like reading a sentence, are you going up or are you going down? Going up, obviously. So how much do you actually go up? One, two, three, four. So the rise, the rise, the numerator is positive four. Now the run, the denominator, is from this x value of zero to this x value of two. How much do you run from here to here? One, two. So the run is positive two. So that's why it's four over two, which means the final answer is really just two. Or you could say that the slope is two over one, but you could just say two. But two over one is better because it describes what's happening from any point you go up to over one, up to over one. So the slope describes the steepness of the line. Um, you guys could try to do number two, which is really easy. What's the slope here, from here to here? What's the rise? One. One? Three. Three. So the slope is what? One over three. That's right. One over three is the slope. M equals. Let's take a look at number three here. Again, we're going to be comparing two dots, this one and this one. Now, you could technically compare any two dots you want on the line, but let's go with these. From here to here, what do you do? Do you go up or do you go down? You go up? You go down. How many do you go down? Three. So when we think about the slope, which is rise over run, you said going down three, that's going to be negative three. Okay. Now, what's the run? Down three over one, so over one. And there's your slope, negative three over one. <coughs> Let's move on to the next part of the homework. Let's take a look at like uh, number four. Once again, in order to find the slope, you need the slope formula. You have to have this memora form this uh, formula memorized. So you also need to recognize that the coordinate, the coordinates themselves are x and y values. So please label it as x, y. This first one, 2, 5 is the first coordinate. 3, 6 is the second coordinate. That's why we label them x1, y1 and x2, y2. And now let's uh, actually apply this formula. And like always, I highly recommend that you do the division and the subtraction symbols first and then you plug in your actual y2, y1. So your y2 value, which belongs on the top left right here, your y2 value is 6. So you're going to put a 6 right there. And your y1 value is 5. Your x2 value is 3. Your x1 value is 2. Again, I simply got the y2 from here, the y1 from here. That's why it's 6 minus 5, 6 minus 5. The x2 is 3. The x1 is 2. So it's 3 minus 2. It's very important that you do the division first with the subtractions um, before plugging in numbers. That way you could clearly see when you have a minus negative, which in this case we don't. We do have 6 take away 5. 6 take away 5 is 1 on top. 3 take away 2 is 1 on the bottom. And there's your slope, 1 over 1. Let's move on. Number 5. Again, let's label the coordinates. And after labeling the coordinates, uh, let's write down the formula. Always start with that. And then, of course, plug in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And once again, let's start with the division and the subtractions and then plug in our actual values. Um, y2 is 1. y1 is 1. x2 is negative 6. x1 is positive 6. So when we actually subtract the numerator, up here we have 1 take away 1. 1 take away 1 is 0. And on the bottom we have negative 6 take away 6, that's negative 12. Ladies and gentlemen, when I have 0 over negative 12, what's our final answer? 0. 
Okay, when you have zero divided by any number, once again, zero <laughs> divided by any number, the answer is zero. So you gotta put m equals zero. Don't put zero over negative 12. If you put zero over negative 12, I'll give you partial credit, but I need you to understand that zero divided by any number is zero. Likewise, if zero is underneath, like if the answer would have been 12 over zero, I don't want you to write 12 over zero as your slope. I want you to just write undefined. If zero is underneath, it's undefined. If zero is on top, it's zero. Let's jump to the next one, number six. Once again, label your coordinates. And then again, write down your formula. I mean, later on, once you have it actually memorized, you're not gonna have to write it down. But I always like writing it down, especially on these videos, so you guys could see the formula over and over and over again. So actually, I shouldn't have used blue on the minuses. So always start by doing the division and the subtractions, and then plug in your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And once again, when you use this formula, start with the division and the subtractions, and then plug in your actual y2 value, which is 8, your y1 value, which is 6, your x2 value, which is 4, and your x1 value, which is 4. Once again, the y2, it came from here, that's 8. y1, 6. x2, 4. x1, 4. Now, as you can see, 8 take away 6, up on top, 8 take away 6, that is 2. And on the bottom, 4 take away 4, that's 0. Okay, so if you plug in 0, if you divide by zero on a calculator, if you type it in, it's going to say error. You cannot divide by zero. We cannot leave this answer as m equals 2 over zero. What we want to say is m equals undefined. Okay, so you want to actually write down m equals undefined. You don't want to leave it as 2 over zero. So you brought up a good point, Adrian. Um, whenever you see that zero is on the bottom, you don't even have to do anything on top. I mean, you already know anything divided by zero is going to be undefined. Even if you actually got a zero up here, zero over zero is still undefined. It's weird. Try that on a calculator. Zero divided by zero, it's going to say error. You cannot do it. It says undefined. Um, so I guess we get the hang of it, right? Yeah. You guys could do the rest of these. Um, down here, I did a couple of them. I did number 20 and number 22 on, another, on the other video, previous video. How about we try, uh, let's try 24 and 25 here. So on this one, you want to write down the equation. We need to create an equation. And how do we create that equation? By taking what, we, what they give us, what we know, and plug it in, and we solve for what we don't know. So once again, they give us two points. The points are x1, y1 x2, y2, and we know that the slope formula is this, m equals, actually let me write it in black, m equals division, <coughs> subtraction, and of course y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, they actually give us the answer, which is 4, m equals 4. So I'm going to take this 4 right here, guys, and I'm going to plug in the 4 right into the answer spot where m is at. So let's do that. Let's plug in a 4 for m. It's going to say 4 equals, and we're going to, of course, have a fraction here with the subtraction on top and on the bottom. And let's plug in our y2 value, which is negative 5, our y1 value, which is 3, our x2 value, which is r, and our x1 value, which is 5. Now, at this point, the only thing, or we can make this a little easier by doing the uh, negative 5 minus 3. So let me rewrite my equation. We're going to have 4 equals negative 8 over r minus 5. Are you with me? Yes. Now, at this point, we could cross multiply if we wanted to. We could put the 4 over a 1 and then multiply 4 times this binomial equals 1 times negative 8. So we could cross multiply if we wanted to. I did not cross multiply on the other video. See, there's so many roads to the same place. You could cross multiply or you could have multiplied by r minus 5 even before combining the, the negative 5 and the negative 3. Or you could just simply get rid of fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator, which in this case is r minus 5. 
So on the other video, I multiplied both sides by r minus 5, so it cancel on r minus 5, and we got rid of the fraction. How about on this one, let's actually cross multiply. I want to go 4 times r minus 5 equals 1 times negative 8. I'm going to set up the cross multiply, sas sas. So I'm going to have 4 times r minus 5 equals 1 times negative 8. So when I solve this equation, I'm going to have 4 times r, that's 4r, 4 times negative 5, that's negative 20, equals negative 8. So what do I do for my next step to start solving this thing? Add 20. Yeah, add 20. That's right. Thank you. Me. Add 20 to both sides. So we're going to have a new equation that reads 4r, that canceled, equals uh, 12. So for my final step, I'm going to divide by 4. The 4's cancel, and r equals 3. That's not our slope. They gave a slope at the beginning. The 3 is the value of r that will actually produce the slope of 4. Let's try one more. Number 25. Again, you're probably going to see these exact questions either this Friday's quiz or next or this Thursday's quiz or next Friday's test. So, a lot of us could get thrown off by the m equals 0, but Let's, let's just go through the motions. This is your first point, x, y. Second point, x, y. So let's put a 1, 1 because it's our first point. 2, 2 because it's our second point. And let's write down our slope formula. Once again, the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we know that the slope formula will give us the answer to slope but they already give us the answer of slope. They tell us that the m is equal to 0. So let's take this 0 that they're giving us, that equals m, and let's plug it in right here. So it's going to say 0 equals the fraction y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 6, y1 is r, x2 is 4, x1 is 7. Are you with me? All right? So this is our new equation, guys. It says 0 equals 6 minus r over 4 minus 7. I could do the 4 minus 7. That's pretty easy. Let's do that. So again, 6 minus r I can't do. Let me just leave it the numerator. But on the bottom, 4 minus 7. <coughs> What's the matter with my voice? Sorry. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. It equals 0. So obviously. <coughs> <clears throat> Obviously, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 3 to get rid of the fraction. That cancels. And over here, 0 times negative 3 is still 0. So what we have, whoops, we have 0 equals 6 minus r. We almost have r by itself. So let's get rid of that 6 by subtracting 6. Subtracting 6, we're going to have negative 6 equals negative r. And just multiply both sides by negative 1, which will change them both to positive. So r equals 6. And that's our final value for r that will actually produce the slope 0. If the 6 was in here and he did the slope, the slope would be 0. So that's our answer for that one. So I hope this video helps. Please finish up this whole worksheet.